What's going on everyone, Jason here again. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create React custom hooks. And so I'm going to create two custom hooks. And what I'm going to do is I currently have a basic React project set up and I'm going to add some functionality to it. And then I'll take that functionality and extract it into a custom hook just so you can kind of see how uh, you, can you can create custom hooks from existing behavior and functionality and just extract that out. And so, yeah, so let's get started. So in our uh, project, it's a very simple project. I have a home component here and I also have a counter component. So you can think of this as a navigation. So if I navigate to counter, I'll see the counter. If I navigate to home, I'll see the home component. Counter is just a counter. So you have an uh, increment button and a decrement and then it'll uh, increment the count and it'll dec decrement the count. And so the feature that I want to add or the functionality is to update the document title based off what the count is on the counter. So whenever we update this, we want to uh, reflect that in the document title. So I want to say count is currently whatever the count is. And so to do that, we'll just go into our counter function. So in our counter function, we have a simple setup. We just have our count state here. And then we have the set count being invoked whenever we click the increment or decrement. And so to add that functionality to update the document title, we'll have to use the use effect react hook. And the use effect uh, react hook, uh, basically all it does, it's, it's used to handle side effects in your React applications. And the way it works is uh, whenever your component mounts or re-renders, the use effect will run whatever you have inside this function. In this case, you can think of it as um, Basically, this effect is always going to run whenever any state changes that causes this counter to re-render. Uh, but if we add a empty array, what this will do is it, is it will say, hey, I only want this effect to run whenever the component mounts. But if there's any state changes uh, that cause this counter to re-render, don't run this use effect. And so you can think of this as being synchronized with no state. And if we write it this way, you can think of it as being synchronized with all states. So any states that change that cause the counter to re-render, this use effect will run. And in our case, we'll make use of it this way. So we'll add the count as a dependency. So in this case, we're saying, hey, we want to synchronize this use effect with the count state. So whenever count state uh, changes, we want to make sure this use effect runs. And so in our case, we'll uh, change the document title to be We'll do back ticks here and then we'll do uh, count is and then we'll pass in the count variable. OK, so that is set up. Let's OK, so let's go back to our project. So then home is here. If we go to counter, as you can see, the effect took place. So the component rendered and then the use effect took uh, ran. So then that's why that's why we see the count is zero if we increment. Uh, the state changed, the count state changed, so then the use effect ran, and then the updated count to is one. And as you can see, it is changing the document.title. And so let's say we changed, or let's say we went to the home component, and uh, we still see the count is negative two, but we actually don't want that uh, side effect to happen whenever we go to another component. We actually want to do that. We want to clean that side effect up. And so in order to do that, we need to uh, clean that effect and uh, use effect has a way for us to do that so you can do what you can do is you can return an anonymous function inside use effect and inside here we want to clean up our side effect so what we want to do is we want to do document dot title equal to react app <clears throat> and so this uh, cleanup function will basically run whenever uh, count has been updated but it's going to run before the next render and so basically it's going to run whenever count gets updated or whenever the component unmounts before the next uh, render happens and so if we save that go to counter as you can see it is still working the way we want to and if we go to home now react app now it says react app in our document title so that's what we want so uh, that return function uh, handled that cleanup for us whenever the component unmounted. So that way the document.title is now React app. Okay, so now we can go into creating our custom hook. And uh, what we need to do then is uh, we can create a new function. And I already did that here. So I have a use document.count. And all it is is a function. And we're going to 
basically what we can do is take our code in here. So we'll copy that out, put it out and paste it in here. So use document count. We know we're going to have to use count and then we need that side effect. And also, uh, let's see, we'll have to create a increment function, which will then take set count and set that equal to count minus one. Oh, I'm sorry, not minus one, but plus one. And then we'll take the decrement and that will be minus one. Okay. And so this custom hook has all the functionality and state that we need. And then we just need to return back count, increment, and decrement. And then our counter can basically, we'll import our custom hook. So we'll do use, uh, sorry, what was the name of our hook again? Document count. So document count from use document count. And so then we can just do inside here and here we'll extract out count and increment and decrement from our use document count hook. And then we can just pass increment in here and then do a decrement in there. Invoke that whenever we click. Count is right here. That's coming from our hook. Save that. Go back to counter. We increment. As you can see, the count is being updated. Go to home. And that has been changed back to the original document title. So there is our use document count hook. And uh, yeah, so that's our, that's our first hook down. So let's go ahead and do the next one. And so our next hook that we'll build out will be, or our next functionality that we'll add on to this will be to basically, uh, I want to be able to click a certain key on my keyboard. And whenever I click that key, I want to be able to change the background color of the page. And so to do that, We'll need to make use of the use effect hook. And with this hook, what we need, what we want then is we're going to pass in an empty array here because we don't want it to synchronize with any states. So we only want it to run once and that's when the component mounts. But if any state change happens that causes this component to re-render, we don't want to run this effect again. We only want to run it one time and that's when it mounts. And so first we'll need to do, what we'll need to do is make use of window, add an event listener. It'll be key up for that event listener. And we'll pass in a handler callback function. We'll define that handler callback function up here. This handler will take an event and then we're going to check for e.key. If e.key is equal to f, we want to then do a document.body.style.backgroundcolor. And then let's change this background to be green. And if we press any other key, we will go ahead and change that background color to be white. All right, and also when this component to clean up this side effect, so whenever this component is going to unmount, we want to clean that effect up. To do that, we'll just need to do window dot remove event listener key up, and then we'll just pass in that handler again. And also, I want to change this document dot. Whoops, actually, yeah. So let me copy this. So whenever we're cleaning up, we want to make sure we change the color of the background back to white. There we go. So let's go back to our home. So if we go to counter and I click the F key and I press another key, it changes back to white and so on. So F green, another key white. 
if I go to home, as you can see, the component unmounted, so we cleaned up that, that side effect. And then if I try to press F, I don't get that um, functionality anymore. And so again, uh, so now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and extract this into another hook. And to do that, like we did before, we would just need to extract this use effect. And then we can go in here into use, oops, sorry, not use, but use background color. So I created this use background color function for our custom hook. And then we can just pass in this use effect that we cut out from the counter component, save that. And now in here, all we need to do is do a use uh, background color hook, and that automatically imported it for me here. So now we're using the use background color hook, save that, go back to our counter. And if we press the F key, as you can see, we're getting that functionality. If we click home, the component unmounted. So we did that cleanup and now the, now we don't get that functionality anymore to change the background color. And uh, also you can make your custom hooks a little bit more or add a little bit more functionality to it. So they're basically just functions so you can add, you know, arguments to it. So let's say we want to uh, change or use this custom hook, but we want to customize what color we can change the background to. So let's say we want to change it to blue. All we need to do is pass in a argument there and then have our custom hook handle it. So we'll do color. And if no argument is passed, we can just default it to green. And then we can change the background color to the color argument, save that, and go back to counter. If I press F, it is now blue. And if I go back to home, it's changed and we don't get that um, effect or functionality anymore. So yeah, so that is, uh, some react custom hooks. Uh, so I hope you all enjoyed it and uh, learned something new And if you enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up And if you'd like to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching everyone. Have a good day